Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Let's try it again. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I like the Baptist every Sunday morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to reaching the summit, our community service initiative here this evening at beautiful Southern West Virginia Community and Technical College. And it's appropriate that we have it on this summit here. A summit on the summit. <laughs> summit on the summit. And I'd like to welcome everyone that's here. But we are excited as we continue working toward reaching this summit as we all get together from time to time and meet to make sure that we're organized when this uh, great event takes place uh, July of 2013. And I would like to thank all of those who are here to this evening from the CCC. I thank you for coming. I thank you for the effort that you have shown so far. And I really and truly believe that this, this event, this uh, community service initiative is going to be an outstanding event here in Wildman County. We look forward to it. We're working hard to, to be organized, to be ready. And we know that it's going to go take, uh, take place and go off without a hitch. It's going to take a lot of work for a lot of people, but we have a lot of people in Wyoming County that, that are eagerly waiting to become a part of this project, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, and tonight is just one of those steps that we must take in order to be prepared for this event. So I'd like to welcome all of you here, to, and there will be others who will come that will introduce everyone, but I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening to this event, and now, I would like to turn it over to Dave. Dave, I'm going to make a country attempt at Copsa. Right on. Uh, you got okay, it. all right. Dave is the Assistant Manager of Programs for the Boy Scouts of America, and uh, he's going to give us an overview of, of the Boy Scouts' role and, and their part in this summit that's coming up. Dave, we'd like to welcome you to Washington County. Here you go, buddy. You take over. You got it. So the, Bechtel, the Summit Bechtel Family National Scout Reserve, that's the full name. Um, I gotta say it once, so there it is. From now on to the Summit uh, this evening. There's moves. You may notice. Um, the, this whole process started back in 2005. Um, from 1981 through 2010, 48 P. Hill Military Base uh, uh, in Virginia was the home to the National Scout Jamboree. Um, we, we borrowed the property from the, the military um, every four years, um, and it was a great place to hold it. But in 2005, with the growing uh, training needs of the military for its various uh, missions uh, and a lot of things, there was a, was a brief window before the 2005 Jamboree um, when we thought we might not be able to use it. And we got a worry, oh, oh my god, where are we going to have a Jamboree? But they had it there and everything worked out. But that, that, that made us realize that borrowing land, having a temporary site, um, could potentially be very um, risky um, for the size of this event. So it was that that led to the beginning of a search for a national site. Um, the other part of that search was when we got the idea that, well, we've got to have some money for it. Uh, Stephen Bechtel and Stephen G. Bechtel Jr. Foundation um, donated $50 million um, for the search and the eventual for the eventual purchase of, of the summit. Um, when he donated, it was you know was to find the site so that we could have some reasonable uh, estimation and surety that we'd be able to build something once we found um, the site we wanted. So um, proposals came in from 28 states, 80 submissions from 28 states involved every time zone. Uh, it spanned the country. And we started zeroing in on this area in the summit property in West Virginia um, that had one really amazing, unique benefit um, that we felt. Uh, 
the sum of property is within a 10 hour drive of 66% of the US population and 33% of the Canadian population. Why that's important to us as Boy Scouts, in our regulations, a 10 hour drive is the maximum that a scout troop can drive um, for a trip. So, 66% of the US population can get here in one day. 66% roughly of uh, Boy Scouts and troops, venturers, um, can get to the summit within a day's drive. We think that's a real valuable um, advantage to this site here, among many other things. A couple of the other things that we were looking for, um, one was we wanted to make sure where we, put, we, were, we, we went to a state, we wanted to make sure we had the support of state, local government, um, that they were on board with us to make this happen. Uh, we also wanted um, 40,000 participants are coming, around 8,000 staff. It's a lot of people coming in um, on buses, cars, all sorts of things. So we wanted access to um, multiple four-lane highway routes. The other thing we wanted was very important to us was access, proximity um, to really world-class outdoor areas, experiences, and activities. Um, so, two of those things. Um, the four lane roads, you've got 19 that comes down here. I'm sure you guys know about the roads in your own state. We also got 64 and 77 that come, um, that come very close and, and nice to meet up. So we thought that was very excellent. And then on three of our sides, we are bordered by the New River Gorge National River area which a national park, I mean, more more than jazz for, um, for a setting for outdoor adventure uh, with Boy Scouts. Um, so really excellent spot. Um, and as far as the support, um, the then governor, Joe Manchin, said the state of West Virginia and the Boy Scouts of America go together like peas and carrots. Um, and uh, Earl Ray Tomlin, the governor, you know, all levels of government have been extremely supportive in making this uh, project happen. Here in West Virginia. That's uh, the senator, uh, current senator with our um, volunteer national president, uh, Rex Tillerson, who is, uh, has another job, a little job as president of uh, Exxon Mobil. So um, these are um, excellent people. So this, this right here is a map of kind of the ultimate plan of the summit. A lot of people ask, are, are you going to be ready for the Jamboree in 2013? Of course we are. I don't say anything else on the penalty of death, but we will be ready. Um, but, you know, the, the complete total construction and development of the site is not going to be finished in 2013. It's probably a 10-year plan, so there's going to be a lot of stuff, a lot of activity happening on this site um, through the, the four jamborees that we'll have on the site in the next 10 years. Um, so we'll have everything we need in each, each year, each jamboree. Um, we'll have a little more facilities, a little more finishing done to the site, um, and it's going to be excellent. Um, this here area here, um, right now development is being concentrated on about 1,300 acres of the 10,600 acres, uh, the Jamboree footprint is what we're calling. That's the area that development is focused on right now to make sure we have everything ready for the scouts, that we have enough flat ground for everyone to sleep on so they don't roll out of their tents, that we have enough bathrooms um, for all the kids, and that we have plenty of showers for the kids not to use their entire time while they're at the Jamboree. They look like they smell lovely. So we're going to have plenty of showers for them. Um, hopefully they'll use them. This is a kind of a, a more close-up view of the site. I'll give you a quick tour through this area. Um, these, this kind of, this, these area here is our six um, living villages where the 40,000 kids and around 8,000 staff will be living, living for the 10 days of the National Jamboree. Um, there's village A, B, C, D, E, F is where the staff will be living. So um, that's the living area. And <coughs> you have around on this side our activity base camps. Um, the focus of this jamboree is to have some of the best, uh, most intense uh, high adventure experiences um, that a kid can have anywhere. In the past, all the activities in the jamboree have been built and taken down. Um, the fact that we have a permit site here, we're going to be really developing world-class permanent program facilities. Um, right here is what we call Mayhem Mountain. That's where the extreme sports area is going to be. That's going to have um, BMX biking, skateboarding, uh, mountain boarding, really cool stuff. It's being designed by a company called Spawn Ranch that has designed all the uh, facilities for all the X Games that have happened. Um, 
So really, that, I mean, that's that's the example with all, all of the uh, consultants we're using for these action areas is the leaders in their field. So that when the kids come here, what they're getting is the very best. We have our shooting area right here is where we'll have archery. We have our shooting sports area here. A lot of different types of firearms. Uh, 40 P Hill was a military base where we use short range, short range firearms, which was shotguns and black powder. We'll have shotguns. Uh, rifles, we'll 22s, um, we'll have pistols um, for the older scouts, so world-class shooting facility. Um, this area here, Adventure Valley, this is where a lot of the really classic um, type, typical Boy Scout activities happen, but um, kind of on steroids. Um, don't do drugs, but this stuff will be on steroids. Um, we have about 37 miles of mountain bike trail. largest rock climbing facilities. We'll be using both natural rock as well as um, artificial rock climbing structures. Um, our climbing walls built to look just like natural rock um, to get the amount of kids through that we want to climb. Uh, we'll, uh, we also have um, our challenge course, code, code course team building type areas here. We have um, two of our really um, exciting and signature program elements. This right here is a 4,000 foot zip line and the kids. We have another one that's slightly shorter um, right here. Um, so that's gonna be really cool for the kids. Uh, around here is our kind of last base camp. That's our canopy tour area. Uh, you guys know about canopy tours, kind of like the ones that are up in uh, class six in that area. Um, Bonsai Designs, who built all the zip lines um, for class six in those areas, are designing and building our canopy tours and zip lines. It's one of their largest facilities they've ever um, constructed. So um, that kind of gives you an idea. In the center here is what we call the Summit Center. This area in the Jamboree will be open to the public um, for seven of the 10 days. Uh, visitors can pay a day fee. They can come and experience um, what's in the Summit Center, which will include um, our big retail area, our scouting museum, most of our exhibits and displays from all sorts of um, areas, companies, educational um, opportunities and stuff like that. Uh, we have our arena here. Um, Jamboree has two big arenas, an opening show uh, Tuesday morning of the Jamboree and then a closing show. Uh, well, not the closing show, but the big show we have Sunday. Um, and we pack about 80,000 people into, these, into this arena for those events. Uh, the day the, the big show, the Sunday show, um, those people that come and, uh, for the day, the day visitors that day, they're, they're feeding being able to stay for the show. So, um, and then right here is what we call Action Point. Action Point will have smaller preview versions of all the activities, uh, of the types of activities that are going on in the base camp. So if someone comes from just the day, they can get a little taste of all the cool stuff that the scouts are doing. Um, but the biggest, best stuff that we have during the Jamboree, for those 10 days of the Jamboree, Jamboree will be only for the kids that, uh, you know, that pay us uh, the, thousand dollar plus uh, fees. Um, fee for Jamboree is $850 uh, to that goes to Jamboree. Um, and then on top of that you have the transportation costs uh, for wherever their home is. So um, that is kind of what you're dealing with there. This is a closer view of the Summit Center area. Um, this is an aerial view. You can kind of see um, this is Camp C and over into D. This is the action point area. Um, one of the lakes will be right here. That is the staff camp area. Um, Glen, the Glen Jean Armory is right around there. Um, the Oak Hill uh, Water Tower, my condo is right there. Just kidding. Uh, another aerial view. This is the A and B sub camp. C and D again, again action point. This is a model campsite that we've set up. Um, these are the shower houses that we'll be using. Um, big part of the summit development is sustainable resources um, being as green um, with our energy use as much as possible. So there used to be a bunch of trees right here. We cut all those down, but all the shower houses, the 350 plus shower house buildings that were constructed for the Jamboree. Um, this wood here is the wood, the trees that we cut down. Um, we're having that milled and uh, 
for use in um, the shower house. It's trying to be um, efficient, economical, and using as much as we can um, from that. Um, the other cool change for the, the Jamboree is that now that we have a permanent facility, we are providing almost all the equipment that the kids will need for the Jamboree. We are providing the tents, the cots, the picnic tables, the shelters, the cooking equipment, the cooking stoves. Um, when a kid comes to Jamboree, all they have to do is bring a duffel bag, which we'll send them ahead of time. They fill that full of their, their personal clothes, uh, their sleeping bag, um, and then they bring a couple water bottles, um, their own personal mess kit, you know, knives, forks, spoon, dish, plate, um, and then a day pack. So they're hiking around the Jamboree. What this has done, 2010 to 20, 2013, we raised our price $50, from 800 to 850. But because of um, all the equipment we're providing, the council costs, in the past, the council had to buy all the tents, all the cooking equipment, picnic tables. Um, they usually had to bring, you know, if they're bringing three or four troops, they had to bring an extra semi uh, worth of stuff. So the council costs we're, we're seeing come down anywhere, depending on where they are in the country, from 150 to 300 dollars. So. Overall, it's going to be cheaper for a scout to attend uh, the 2013 National Jamboree than the 2010 Jamboree, which we think is really cool. Starting out on um, a new property, just a little more economical, gives you closer up views. Um, the, a lot of people always ask me, you know, jobs, what can we get work? Well, right now the Boy Scouts directly employ around eight people at our office in the mall, at the Crossroads Mall. And uh, our, uh, we've contracted with uh, Trinity Works, the developer, um, a, a big time site developer out of, of Texas, to construct the site. Uh, part of our contract was that they hire 8% uh, West Virginia labor. Canon uh, uh, Stone right now is our largest subcontractor. So um, for the next little while, the best, biggest opportunity for jobs are through um, our developers. Um, and. Uh, the other 20% of the labor, that's a lot of the action sport consultants that are building our, um, the, those activity areas that I was talking about earlier. Another great thing, we found a lot of rock, um, enough rock that we can make all the gravel we need on site. That's preventing around um, 20, 26,000 truckloads of gravel would have had to been brought in um, had we not had that ability on site. So that's another efficient uh, development practice we're using. Um, the developers are working uh, two 10-hour shifts a day, from Monday through Saturday. Um, and uh, they work at night. The, uh, when they were doing the grading on the property, they had these uh, shovels with uh, GPS units on each end of the shovel. Um, so they were grading at night. The satellite was telling them what angle they were at. They didn't have to see the ground. And they were going forward that's that's pretty high tech. Um, again, this is more of the equipment that we'll be providing. Jamboree, um, like I said, um, we got the best in the business building the site. They came together back last January and uh, spent about two weeks in this room um, designing it um, and planning it out um, in conjunction with our volunteer leaders. Um, Summit Corps, 2011. You guys hear about uh, Summit Corps that we had last year? We had about uh, 1,200 members of Board of Yarrow, which is a service um, fraternity, service organization within the Boy Scouts of America. Um, they came out and built uh, around almost 13 miles on a, on a stack of mountain biking trail in the New River Gorge uh, Park. It's a trail that's already open to the public. Um, it wasn't on our site. It happened all the uh, public lands that everyone can enjoy. And that's, that's kind of why we're here tonight. Um, a big part of the Jamboree in 2013 is that for five days of the Jamboree, um, we'll be sending around 8,000 scouts out <coughs> to southern West Virginia communities uh, to do service projects that will have a lasting benefit on the communities they go into. Um, service work is a very important uh, part of scouting. If any of you have been involved um, with it, you know that for every rank level, a kid has to perform a certain amount of, of service hours get an eagle product to get his eagle award. He has to design, organize, and come up with his own uh, service project. Um, and at our biggest event, we felt it was time to start um, bringing that important component into the January event. Um, 
Um, so this is the first time we're going to be doing this at a jamboree. Um, we have a lot to figure out. Um, but we know the most important thing um, about this process is finding the right projects. Um, and we're not going to be able to do that without involvement from each um, county's community. Um, we've kind of s selected about nine counties that we can logistically support projects to. Kids in the bus for six hours every day. Um, we want about doing stuff. So we think realistically um, that that's about nine counties, and Wyoming County here um, is one of those. Um, so, you know, ultimately the Boy Scouts of America will say um, yes or no uh, on all the projects. But we're not going to say no because a project, because we think a project is an important. Uh, if we say no to a project, it's because we can't, for some reason, logistically support it. Um, you guys need to tell us what's important to you. Um, we, that's why we need your help, input, um, organization um, to find these projects that are going to make a difference in your area. Um, so, um, I had a lot of funding um, come through in the last few months. We've reached about $250 million out of the $400 million dollars uh, needed for the first two phases of the project. Um, a couple other important things about the, the Jamboree. Um, 2013 will be the first time that venturing scouts can come and participate in the Jamboree as participants. And venturing is our high school age program, which is co-educational. So females will be able to sign up and come to the 2013 National Jamboree participate just like any other Boy Scout in the past. The only way females can participate in the Jamboree was by females or adventurers um, was by signing up for staff. So I think that's going to be very exciting. A lot happening on the site. 2013, July 15, 2013 is the, is the opening of the National Jamboree. 2017 will be our second Jamboree. 2019 um, we'll be hosting the World Jamboree um, here in West Virginia. Um, the United States Mexico and Canada put together a proposal and it was accepted unanimously. Um, it'll be the first time that three different countries have hosted uh, a World Jamboree. Um, and then in 2021, we'll have our next National Jamboree. That's four Jamborees in the next 10 years starting right now. Uh, so that's a lot, of, a lot of activity. There's a lot of opportunity um, for these projects. We hope to be performing, doing service community work, at the very least, um, in all of our jamborees. Um, so there's, you know, ideally, we'll have so many projects that we'll have to, you know, we can't do them all. Uh, that won't mean that they never get done. Um, you know, it could be a great idea that one of your community groups and leaders take on after the jamboree or, or, or whatnot. Um, or it could happen in future jamborees. Um, the important thing is, is to get these ideas um, submitted, get them discussed, get them talked about with the community so we can find the right things and uh, have a great experience in uh, 2013. Um, so uh, <coughs> the best place on the web, there's a lot of places I have cards that have all of our uh, web addresses on them, but summit.scouting.org is kind of the hub for all of our information. There's videos. Um, the map I have there on the table can be downloaded from there. Lots of great information um, about the summit. And we'll show a little video here. Were you a scout? Yes, I was. Eagle? Uh, I did not get my eagle. Oh. <laughs> but I got a pretty good job. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you got the job, right? That's, That's right. right. <laughs> I went out to Philmont and got to. Uh, interested in my adventures. Good evening. For the record, I'm a former brownie and I sold the most Girl Scout cookies in my troop which was Troop 2259. <laughs> um, I went the, I already saw Dave, I already saw Dave push this earlier, I still did. 
still did the same thing. I'm not going to talk long. Um, I think most of you all know um, or have heard about the CCC, the Citizens Conservation Corps, West Virginia. Um, it's a recreation or revitalization of the old CCC in the 30s during the FDR era. Um, the CCC in the 30s, it was the CCC boys, and they did work in America's Forest, a lot of work in, you'll see a lot of state parks, um, even here in West Virginia, across the country. But these young men, and it was young men only at the time, and the CCC of today is both men and women of all ages. But in the old CCC, it was young men that worked for a very small wage, and they had to send most of that wage back back to their families. Um, it started the CCC concept, and the CCC started reappearing across the country in the early 80s. And um, there's 144, or 146, 146 service and conservation corps across the country, similar to the CCC of West Virginia. Um, we're one of the few that is a statewide organization. We're a nonprofit corporation. We've been in existence since 1993. Mr. Martin, our CEO, is in the back. He was, he's actually been with the CCC since 93. I've been with the CCC since 98. Um, when you look at the CCC and the projects we do, and of course, we're extremely excited to be a part of this Reaching the Summit Community Service Initiative. If not for the projects we've already tackled, and we'll still have people come up and ask us, you know, what are you all thinking? This is this is huge, can you do it? Are you all ready for 40,000 Boy Scouts? And I, I kind of compare it to when we first started the State's Courtesy Patrol Program back in 1998. Now this is by far a lot larger than when we first started the Courtesy Patrol, but we didn't know exactly what we were getting into, into then. It was the largest welfare reform movement in the nation for 1998. We took over 140 individuals off the welfare rolls, placed them into training, education, um, and 25 trucks that are patrolling 800 miles of four-lane highway across the state. So you've got 25 areas of patrol still operating today with a communication center that has to stay in contact with those trucks. And it really taught us how to manage. It taught us about logistics. And it taught us that there is no, there is no downtime. I mean, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days out of the year. So that sort of kick-started us and propelled us into six or other six or seven other projects that we do um, today. We operate the First Tee of West Virginia, which is a youth development program that utilizes a game of golf to teach core values to young people. So they're teaching um, honesty, integrity, courtesy, sportsmanship, judgment, respect, leadership. So we've got young people as four all the way up to age 17, and we have six programming areas throughout the state of West Virginia. And um, one of the newest initiatives is a national school program that's part of the First Tee, where we're going into eventually all elementary schools in the state of West Virginia to introduce the core values into the uh, physical education classes. And that kind of mirrors what we're gonna be doing here in this nine-county nine region for the Reaching the Summit Community Service Initiative. But we're actually gonna be going into all schools, elementary, middle, and high school, speaking to the entire student body and introducing them to the Reaching the Summit Community Service Initiative. For short, as Dave said, we refer to it as the summit. I refer to this as the initiative from here on out. But we're gonna go into all of those um, schools. And I heard Dave talk about service, youth, community, that's what it's all about. Those are common denominators that the CCC feels very strong about. And we have to reach out to our youth. So that's going to be one of our initiatives and one of our um, approaches is to go into these schools and work with the county champions and superintendents in each of the schools to pull that off. Um, in addition to the first team and the courtesy patrol, we also um, are trail builders and operate trail projects throughout West Virginia. We have young people ages 16 to 24. They're in the New River Gorge National Park Service, Harpers Ferry National Park Service. We're in the Eastern Panhandle, CNO Canal, um, the Mining Academy in um, Beaver, NCTC in um, Shepherdstown. 
We're um, North Bend State Park in Parkersburg. We've worked on the Cape and Decker, Decker Trail in Morgantown. Um, we do beautification projects for the city of Beckley, city of Huntington, and um, pretty much any county or crevice or city uh, throughout the state. We're doing some type of community service project or work and reaching out to, again, these young people. Um, we also operate a 12 state VISTA program where we have 75 uh, VISTAs um, in 12 states. It's called the Appalachian Coal Country Team. We're the fiscal sponsor for that project. And we also work with the Challenge Athletes of West Virginia, and it's an adaptive ski program um, at Snowshoe. So um, that's kind of an overview of CCC and why we're bold enough, I guess, to take on, take on this challenge. But if it's not for the communities and great leadership in each of these counties, it won't get done. I can say it's been exciting and it's been different in every county we've gone to. And there's some type of plus or jewel in each of the counties that we've been to. The county commission here and the leadership here has been, been phenomenal. And we walked out of our first meeting saying, we don't have anything to worry about with Wyoming County. So that energy has continued. I know 2013 seems a far, a long way off, but it's really not. I love the ideas that have been generated here. The project applications we've talked about, which uh, we're gonna release and leave down here this evening. Uh, 40,000 scouts, 8,000 scouts per day for five days, potentially 1,000 scouts here in Wyoming County. You know, everyone says it's a game changer, and it really truly is. This type of labor, and this type of opportunity we've never seen in a lifetime. And uh, super excited about working with Wyoming County. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to, it's, there's co-champions here in uh, Wyoming County. So I'm gonna turn it back over to president slash champion Silas and uh, let you take it from here. Thank you. Notice on the uh, agenda it says co champions. They say behind every uh, great man is a great woman. Uh, I'm going to change that behind a great woman is me. <laughs> <laughs> behind Christy is me. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Folks, uh, this initiative means to Wyoming County probably more than than most people have, have envisioned because we've been in it from the beginning. And the opportunity, and I wrote this down to just come to me a minute ago as I was trying to think about what this initiative means to Wyoming County is to seize the moment. You know, throughout our lives, we live in Wyoming County all of our lives, and during that lifetime, there may come one important event that happens that can affect everybody in the county. And when that opportunity presents itself, we must seize the moment. And this is what this initiative has provided and is providing for uh, not only the environment, but for the people of Wyoming County. And we want to do that. One of the things that I've I seen that was that they had up on his uh, presentation here is something that we've talked about in our meetings, and I'm going to mention it here, that we need to keep in mind is the word sustainability. You know, 2013 we may have up to a thousand Boy Scouts per day come into this county to do projects of several or projects of several different kinds but we want them to be sustainable that means that we want those projects to live long after the Boy Scouts have gone to be used by to be seen by to be appreciated by to enhance Wyoming County because this is where we live, it's where we work, it's where we raise our families. And this initiative is, is important to us. And we want to seize the moment and to do those things that will long live after uh, this jamboree has moved on. We have decided and have begun to work on uh, involving our kids here in this county because we're going to have young students coming in from all over different parts of the country with different ideas, different uh, beliefs and philosophies, different dialects, 
slangs. I'll tell you this little story about the slang in West Virginia. Back during the strike of 1963, my dad picked us up and moved us to Florida. That great bastion of hillbills. I went to school down there and down in Florida. It wasn't all in one building. It had several buildings, and I had to go from one building to the next. I had been there long, maybe a week or two, and I was running through the yard to go to another building. It was like a, a satellite classroom. And the windows were open. Didn't have air conditioning in 63. The teacher stuck his head out the window and he said, uh, Models. I stopped dead in my tracks. He said, Come here. I said, Oh, Lord. It's been your way, Bummer, in trouble. He said, Get in here. So I walk in there. I didn't know one kid in that place. He's up in front of the classroom. He said, Come up here. He said, Turn around and face the class. And I did. He said, Now, they want to hear you. Talk. <laughs> I said, what? They said, yeah, like that, like that. I said, be kids. They want to hear me talk. I didn't know I talked for them. And we want to involve our kids in this initiative. So what we have done, we have, we have, I have met with the Board of Education, uh, Superintendent, or Assistant Superintendent Frank Mann and Mr. Blackwell. They give me pretty much opportunity to go visit the schools, which I have already made contact with some schools. We're going to start with their student councils uh, in the lower grades now to maybe get them to our November 10th meeting, which is our next meeting, so that we can have some input. Uh, and then we're going to go into the schools. Several of us is going to, we've created a little team. We're going into the schools and kind of give them an update on what, what this is all about and open it up let the kids ask questions because we want them to be a part of this initiative because we think it's once in a lifetime experience. And we want them to be able to enjoy this experience. Folks, I think it's an exciting time in Wyoming County. Those of us that live here and work here every day, things are going on in Wyoming County now that have not been going on in our lifetime. Things are happening. Building new schools, businesses are coming in, jobs are being created. That doesn't mean that we don't have our problems. We are attacking our problems head on. We're looking forward to the future because I think the future is bright for Wyoming County. One of the things that makes it even brighter is this initiative. It's coming up in 2013. We're looking forward to it. We're excited about it. And Christy will keep us in line, keep us organized. And I know that this is going to be a positive event in Wyoming County and it will long be remembered as probably one of the glowing lights that's going to occur in Wyoming County. And uh, I'm so happy to be a part of it. I know uh, the folks that have been coming to our meetings, and the last meeting we had, we couldn't hold them. We had, we we're going to have to move it to a larger facility uh, and, uh, on November the 10th. We're looking for a, a good crowd there. And folks, I think Wyoming County is excited about it. I know the commission is excited about it. Uh, we're going to work diligently uh, to make this as uh, Jason says we're going to make it happen now I'm going to bring Christy up now Christy is the, the rock and she's going to uh, introduce and talk about some of our committees that we've already uh, appointed uh, as we move forward with this initiative
some just lots of different things. Trail building has been one of the big things. River access has been another thing that we've discussed a lot, um, trying to get um, access to the Guyana River. Um, and that's one of the things that's been discussed quite a bit um, with some of these things as well. So trail building and river access um, are some of the ideas that they've come up with. Um, there have been even talk about um, road signs throughout the county and of course beautification at the entrances of Wyoming County is a big project that we'd like to do. Um, so those are just some starting points for us to discuss and move forward on some of those projects and um, applications. So um, the project application is available for you to take home tonight. It is also available online. Correct. Okay, great. Um, it's available online as well. So you can accept anybody can put in an application. You don't have to be an organization. It can be any, any individual can apply. And um, the committees that we have here in Wyoming County um, is the uh, Youth Council Committee, the Public Rel Relations and Media. Um, Youth Council Committee, um, Susan England is going to be involved in that. With the Media and Public Relations, we have Mary Catherine Brooks and John Conlin that's going to be involved in that. The Fundraising Committee, um, Dale Stewart is the chairman of that. Of course, Wyoming County EDA is going to be the fiscal agent for the project. Um, we have a volunteer committee. We have the Arts and Education <coughs> Committee. And, um, and then tonight, we, we have the, the booth back there to tell you all about the summit. And um, Dave has lots of good information for you back there. Um, so we'd like for you to, to look around at these, sign up for the committees that you'd be interested in. If you know people that would be good for these committees, that would, um, Please let them know about it. Let us know about them so that way we can get them on board. Um, as Sala said, our next meeting is November the 10th at 10 o'clock at the Current Technical Center. Um, so if you guys can visit those booths, invite people to that meeting, and get more people involved, we will not be able to do it with just these 12 people that are here tonight. <laughs> we, we're going to have to have hundreds and hundreds of people for that week. So we need as many people as possible involved for that week. We're going to need um, volunteers for supervisors to supervise them. We're going to have to have materials, uh, supplies for the projects, and um, so we're going to need a lot of volunteers for that week. So the more people, the better. <laughs> so we encourage you to volunteer and send folks our way to sign them up for committees, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see them on, on the team. I think that's all I have. You know, Wyoming County, we're into everything. <laughs> Those busters are going to be in the courthouse on Saturday night. And the busters are going to be down there. Yeah. We're going to have the ghost busters in there to get that courthouse monster. We're going to box. We're going to put him in. We're going to catch him and put him in that box. And he's going to turn the lights out. So, folks, it is an exciting time in Wyoming County. And we, we want, we're glad that you're a part of it. I know you're going to enjoy it. 
the ride's going to be great. It's that little video said it's going to be a it's going to be a great ride, a great adventure. We're glad to be a part of it. And we're glad that you are working with us to make this a huge success. Thank you for coming. I need a picture. Let's get everybody together and she'll get a picture and we'll all be immortal. She'll put it in the paper. <laughs>